Age of the universe is 6,000 years. Now, how do they determine that? They go to their Bibles, they take the genealogies, and they add up all the ages that are associated with these genealogies. And yes, indeed, it's about 6,000 years. With regards to biological evolution, they reject macroevolution. What do I mean by that? Let's take the vertebrates. They would reject the notion that fish evolved into amphibians, that then evolved into reptiles, that then evolved into mammals. They would reject this notion. However, they would accept microevolution. The notion that there's a certain plasticity within species, for example, the different varieties of dogs. However, dogs remain dogs and they don't ultimately change, say, into birds or something like that. When it comes to God's activity in the world, and remember it's very important to distinguish God's activity in the origin of the world from God's activity in people's lives. Firstly, Young Earth creationists accept God creating the world through dramatic interventions, direct events, over six days. And of course, this reflects their very strict literal interpretation of the opening chapter of the Bible, that the world was indeed created just as stated in chapter one of the Bible. When it comes to God's activity in people's lives, yes, they accept that. They believe a personal God who acts both dramatically and subtly in people's lives. Young Earth creationists would say that the Bible is the Word of God inspired by the Holy Spirit. When it comes to interpreting those opening chapters of the Bible, they use a very strict, literal method of interpretation. In Genesis 1, the six-day creation account, they would say that the days of Genesis are literal they are actual 24-hour days. When it comes to Noah's flood in Genesis chapters 6 to 9, they would say that indeed it is a global flood that lasted one year. In other words, the entire earth was flooded. When it comes to the challenging issue of human origins, young earth creationists believe that there was an Adam and Eve and we, all of us, all humans, descended from Adam and Eve. Young Earthers would also accept the two theological notions that come out of the Bible, that humans have been created in the image of God, and that all humans are sinful. Young Earth creationists are conservative Christians. They accept the foundational Christian belief in the Incarnation, that is, they believe that God became a man in the person of Jesus. They also believe the foundational Christian belief in the resurrection of Jesus. That is, that after Jesus was crucified and died, he later rose from the dead. He rose physically and bodily. Young Earth creationists embrace biblical ethics. That is, they go to the Bible to find out their morality and values. And a couple examples, for 40 years, the Institute for Creation Research under the leadership of Henry Morse and Duane Gish has been a force in North America promoting young earth creation. Today, a new organization has also emerged, Answers in Genesis, under the leadership of Ken Ham. Our next category is progressive creation. In churches, you'll often hear this position referred to as old earth creation or the day age theory. Progressive creationists believe the universe has an ultimate plan and purpose rooted in God. They also accept intelligent design that nature points to God. Now, you'll notice as we go across the chart from left to right, more and more modern science is accepted. Here with regards to the age of the universe, they would believe that the universe is very, very old. They would accept the modern notion coming out of physics of the Big Bang, that the universe exploded into being about 10 to 15 billion years ago. Progressive creationists would also accept that the Earth is very old, 
about 4.6 billion years, and they would also accept modern geology in terms of how the Earth was created. However, when it comes to biological evolution, progressive creationists are like young Earth creationists. They reject macroevolution, though they do accept some microevolution. Progressive creationists claim that God uses two different methods to create the world. When it comes to the origin of life, God creates directly, using dramatic interventions over billions of years to introduce basic kinds of life. Of course, the notion of kinds of living organisms comes from Genesis 1, the first chapter of the Bible where ten times it refers to living organisms reproducing after their kinds. So what God does is he creates basic groups of living organisms and introduces them on Earth at different times over the billions of years of Earth history. When it comes to the inanimate universe, and what I mean by that is when it comes to the creation of stars and planets and galaxies, God creates indirectly through ordained and sustained natural processes. That is, his natural processes. And of course, the word ordains, very important, meaning this was God's will. And secondly, sustained, meaning God sustains all these natural processes. So according to progressive creationists, God ordained the Big Bang, and as the Big Bang exploded and over time all these different inanimate objects were created, God sustained this natural process. When it comes to God's activity in people's lives, yes, progressive creationists believe in a personal God who interacts with people through dramatic and subtle divine activity. According to progressive creationists, the Bible is the Word of God inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now, when it comes to the interpretation of these opening chapters of the Bible, instead of a strict literalism, they use a looser literalism, if you want to call this a general literalism. When it comes to the days of Genesis in the first chapter of the Bible, instead of 24-hour days, as suggested by young earth creationists, Progressive creationists say that the days are long, long periods of time. In other words, geological ages. Let me give you an example. This chart comes from a friend of mine, Don Day, who's a professional geologist. And of course, as a geologist, he accepts the geological column and the paleontological record. That is, the fossil record we find in the Earth's crust. Now, being a progressive creationist, Don believes that different creatures were created at different times. So God comes into the universe, creates different creatures, waits a while, then comes back and creates different creatures across the billions and billions of years of Earth history, with humans being on the top. Now, progressive creationists are devout Christians, and they will take their Bibles, and what they'll try to do is align the days of Genesis, which are not 24-hour periods, but actually periods of millions and millions of years long, and they'll try to align the days of Genesis like you see here, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, and six, and try to align it with the fossil record. Since progressive creationists accept modern geology, they reject the notion of a global or worldwide flood. However, they do believe that Genesis 6 to 9, which records Noah's flood, they believe this is a historic event, but it is a local flood. In other words, it's a flood that is restricted to 